Hello, my name's Tom, and thank you for coming back and watching another episode of Garage Time. This week's project is to finish prepping this roll bar to go back in the car. Garage Time. Yeah, I mentioned before that I wanted to make some removable door bars that go from the roll bar down to the driver's foot well right across the seat area and the door area. And that will improve chassis stiffness and also impact protection from the side at the track. But the disadvantage is it makes it difficult to get in and out of the car because you have a bar right in your door. So I want to make them removable for the street. Yeah, I made this quick sketch here, sort of showing how this junction would work. This is the main hoop and here's a little piece welded onto it. In fact, it'd be pretty substantial. This 3 16 plate would get welded to the main hoop. It would have these rounded shapes a little bit like this template I cut out with two holes in it. And then the removable bar would be a similar plate that would get sandwiched together. This is shown detached, but these holes would line up with these holes. And then the removable door bar that would go all the way down, you know, from here down to the driver's feet would have a, uh, a cut into it so the plate could be uh, inserted in partially to the tube. And then rather than just cut the tube off, I would, you know, shape the end of the tube so it has a nice transition to the flat plate. And I think this junction would be as strong as some of the aftermarket couplers. In fact, it might be better because this being a taller plate, this is about uh, four inches tall. It is able to, you know, carry a little bit of torque too. So if the chassis twists, it might be able to carry a little bit of force. Okay, this string represents the door bar in a kind of a straight form. And I have it attached down here to the heater channel. That's approximately where the door bar would terminate. Have to build some brackets there. And then on this side, it is attached pretty high up on the B pillar. So I'm gonna see if I can get in the car without tripping on the string. This represents my seat. I'm not exactly sure. I think my seat might be a little higher than that, but let's just try to get in. Also, I won't be able to use this section of the A-pillar like a handle. I mean, the windshield is going to prevent me from really grabbing onto that. But I can put some more weight on the bar. So I think between the two, it's, uh, it's doable. And the fact that it's removable means I can customize it in the future. It also might be a little easier with the steering wheel. Um, I don't have a steering wheel on either side, so I'm just doing the passenger side here. But time will tell. Okay, here's yet another template. This one is designed to attach to the roll bar and then it'll have, it'll have a connection to this round tube here, and then two bolts will secure it. So the roll bar is more vertical than this pillar. So this is about perpendicular to the bar, and we'll go to the roll bar right about there.
All right, you saw me cut these strips out and this is what they're for. So I have chamfered one side of these. There's a little angle to that. It's probably like, I don't know, 20 degrees or something. And these are gonna serve as like traction devices so that as I clamp the plate on top of this, I mean, this is gonna get welded to the roll bar. There's gonna be a plate that has the door bar attached uh, on top of this. And there's gonna be some mating uh, tracks so that they, they get some traction uh, when the tube is trying to either bend or pull or push, it has something to bite into. It's not just the bolts alone carrying the load. It's going to be these, uh, these beveled plates. So the plate that comes on top is going to have the opposite bevel, and they're going to sandwich each other and lock each other in place. Uh, that's the idea anyways. Hopefully it works out well. Okay, this probably doesn't make it any more clear, but uh, this plate here is what's in the red. It has these locking features in it. And then this is a, the holes. These are the holes right here. Uh, the holes is the side view. There's a big bolt that clamps it all together. And then these, uh, these pieces here are these little features here. It's intended to create a locking joint as it comes together. Here are the finished plates with these interlocking features welded on top. You know, in hindsight, it probably would have been better to machine these in, but I'm sort of running out of time. I want to get this done. You can see there's a slight chamfer on the inside, and there'll be a mating piece that goes right inside this cavity. So one here, one here, and then when these get bolted down, it's going to prevent this from, from rotating or twisting. This new bracket is now tack welded to the main hoop and I've measured a couple times to make sure that that's where I want it. I gotta let that cool down. Tack welded this side on. This side's still a little warm, but at least I can get my gloves on it and uh, finish up these little stitch welds. I'm not gonna weld it continuously because I don't wanna warp the tube. I'm just gonna do about an inch and a quarter here, inch and a quarter here on both sides. You can see I got one on this side too. I also want to join these two tubes together. This is the diagonal bar, which is required. This is the harness bar, also it's required. But to put a little piece in between here is not, but it will improve the structure in case of a uh, major collision. Joining these two tubes together will improve the buckling strength because it essentially turns the length of the tube into two smaller tubes. There's a toilet paper roll, and it's about the same diameter as the tubing and uh, it's just gonna make it a little bit easier for me to mark the tube since this one's on a, on a funny angle. So there's gonna be some iterations here, so I thought I would just start with this. Okay, so that fits like this. 
But now I need to do the same thing on this tubing and get the length right and the angle right. So it's a little complicated. Here's the toilet paper roll fit in between the tubes. And here it is from this view. To complicate matters a little bit more, I'm using a different size tubing. This tubing is inch and a quarter out, out, outer diameter. Uh, when I bought this, I actually thought I was buying one inch, but um, it is what it is. It's a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna um, trace this onto here, cut it, and uh, I'll be lucky to get it right the first time. Right, so I already messed this up. Um, this is this piece is already too short. You can see how it's missing inside here. This piece is uh, much the toilet paper is much longer than the steel. That section is missing. So what happened was I tried to because this piece is so short. I tried to uh, on the waist side of the cut, and you can't do that. You got to rotate the part and cut it, but this is so short, it's gonna be hard to use the saw. Anyways, live and learn. All right, before I bring the roll bar back up here onto the bench, I can already see that the mismatch in diameters is going to be a little difficult. So I, I have this situation where there's a tall bridge in the middle and these two legs on the side are interfering with a larger diameter tube. So the solution here is to just, you know, trim these points down and then massage the inside a little bit because it needs to fit tight on this tube, otherwise it's never gonna fit on both. This is the actual piece. This is the one I screwed up on. <laughs> okay, I've just hit this with my bench grinder and now it fits this tube really well. So I'm gonna make a template on this side and then transfer it to this side, just so I get the same curvature. A little finessing is all it needed. Okay, I've already tried this on the ground. I know it's pretty close. So the idea is that this tube is perpendicular to both this one and this one. So when this sits on here, this is perpendicular. And you know, I've checked it with the, with the square. It's, it's perpendicular here. And then if I flipped it, this is also cut to be perpendicular. The idea is that you, know, you slide it in and right now it's interfering on this side just a little bit. But if I come in from this direction, it's interfering on this side a bit more. So the idea is just to keep shortening this tube until it's perpendicular to both. That's kind of what I'm after. It fits, yay. So right here, it's perpendicular, perpendicular.
As you can see, that guy's on there. I've welded uh, all the way around. I tried not to uh, cut too much of the uh, welding, just so you can see all the manipulation that's required to get this part welded on. I had to flip the part, tie it to the ceiling, work upside down. It's just a lot of, uh, a lot of effort. All right, that's all the welding I had planned for this one, at least until I get it installed in the car. So now it's time to paint it. Here it is all cleaned up. I wiped it down with wax grease remover before sanding and also after. And this is 80 grit sandpaper. It just cleans it up and gives it some um, mechanical tooth for the epoxy primer to really bite in its uh, maximum adhesion. black. So that worked out pretty well. I got a good first coat on the roll bar and it's going to go in the car next. Finally, it's now ready to install in the car. Obviously I need to grind off a little bit of the paint where it's going to be welded but that should be easy to do. Same with in the car. I just wanted to get the first coat on it. Also, you guys have probably noticed this week, I've added some little uh, ticker boxes and information boxes in the video. Let me know what you think on these. Uh, is this a clutter nuisance or are you curious about you know, how much time it's taking, how much cost each episode is? So thanks again for watching this week. Come back next week. I should have the roll bar welded in the car along with those um, little plates that attach to the B pillars and also the bars that attach to the camera boxes should be completely in. Take care.